uh, I think usually when this kind of meeting with scientists, at the beginning I usually make a uh, make clear uh, this kind of meeting two purpose. One purpose uh, simply uh, human knowledge sort of expand and research more and more deeper, wider like that. Uh, I think the science is actually sort of one some kind of sort of method to find uh, to investigate the reality. Uh, I think tremendous sort of help to expand our knowledge. Uh, now, as a result of meeting with a uh, number of scientists, <coughs> uh, top scientists, <coughs> uh, their knowledge uh, from their research work or investigation, the knowledge about matters, uh, physical, physical level, their knowledge really marvelous and still expand. Now about uh, inner world, mind, emotion, these, you see, they, in the scientific field, uh, see, they, up to now, see, there are not much sort of concentrate uh, in, the, in this sort of field. They are usually, you see, they, in material or matters field, they can calculate, they can measurement, they can take measure, measure like that. About mind, you cannot uh, apply in that method. So something different. Uh, so some radical scientist, even they deny existence of mind, just a brain. Uh, now some top scientist uh, begin to feel the movement of the brain there may be some another sort of factor, third factor, uh, which which may, which we may call mind. Now the the Buddhist science about mind says, as uh, my my friend mentioned, there are many different level of sort of mind or consciousness. So grosser level of consciousness entirely. Uh, depend on our brain or neuron, these, these things. But more subtler, more subtler, you see, more independent, like that. So, uh, for example, awakening state, most cases, our sen sensorial, I mean, sensorial experience entirely depend on our brain. Then, mental level, also, I think, grosser level of mental sort of experience also is it directly related with brain on these things. Then, one example, dreaming, another level of consciousness. Then, sensorial consciousness no longer working, but men, men, mental sort of or say the consciousness. Oh. Uh, then, deep sleep, further deeper. Then at the time faint, like at the coma, coma somewhere, coma. The usual sort of mental sort of mind not working, but still the continuation of consciousness still there, so much more deeper, like that. So uh, now and then. Uh, last few few years, I think about one decade, I think, uh, some scientists 
already carry some uh, some project as an experiment. So pilot we have pilot project experiment. <coughs> Uh, give some training uh, mm. and some awareness about so the different emotions, these things. Uh, so the different effects of different emotions, some sort of education, some explanation. Then uh, let some so, so the selected, selected or choose and volunteer sort of people. They carry some sort of uh, uh, practice. Uh, with some knowledge. Before that, sort of, before that, so the practice start, they check blood pressure, uh, amount of stress, uh, these things. After two, three weeks, the training, some simple form of meditation or uh, training of mind, uh, then uh, Again, check blood pressure and these sort of stress. stress. So they found some change. So without touch brain, simply training mind, uh, some effect. And in fact, this is through training of mind, actually some change take place in brain. Because what was that the word? Plasticity. Or oh, that one. Uh, I do not know. <laughs> Even I understand that meaning. Still, I cannot pronounce properly. Uh, <laughs> unless my tongue change. European tongue put here. Or English tongue. <laughs> Sometimes Japanese, when you speak English, a little bit different. You will see it. <laughs> so now, uh, among those scientists, brain specialists, or health science, now begin to pay some attention about emotion, about mind. Uh, so dealing with even physical illness, you see, they not neglect about mental state calm mind, full of enthusiasm. Uh, firstly, very sort of effective measure to prevent the illness. Then they take a sort of higher <coughs> recover, higher, no, really recover. what do you want to call? Recover. Uh, recover. Also is the person, patient, full of enthusiasm. It's a much quicker recover like that. So they already, now the effect of mind or emotion, now really obvious. So in any way, uh, now in, uh, in, the in, in scientific field, now about mind, about emotion, also now uh, uh, begin include. So there are experiment, there are research work, now, beyond the physical, what's the emotion? What's the relation, mind and brain, these things? So this is one purpose. Simply extend, expand our knowledge about phenomena, external phenomena, internal phenomena, like that. This is one purpose. Now, second purpose. I often use it telling people, the 20th century, I think in research, scientific field, highly sort of today, develop uh, mm. with uh, the help of new instrument, you see their research ability, much increasing, uh, and, and then uh, I think the scientific sort of knowledge and also with the with help of the scientific sort of knowledge, uh, then uh, technology also is a much increase. So I think the, this, uh, the level, 
development of science and technology. Uh, according to that level, I think we human beings, we humanity, should be much, much happier. Material facility, much improved. So simultaneously, mental level also should be much happier. But that is not certain. Material sort of facilities much improve. Life will become much easier. But at the same time, more worry. <coughs> uh, more sort of they fear sometimes in modern society. And then even billionaire, very rich and also good name, quite influential, but as a person, very unhappy person. I met this is some very rich and quite powerful, uh, <coughs> like some you see, big universities chancellor. I had so on sort of some occasion when we met and we talk uh, after initial sort of exchange and nice words. Then eventually, they, some, some of them express their problems inside. Sometimes they say there are material facilities and modern education, or all these, very high sort of standard. But in deep inside, some kind of fear and loneliness. And anyway, nowadays we notice among children, among young people, violence. Sometimes violence rate increasing, and also including suicide. I think Sweden, Swedish people, I think social kasota kasa, social the panda kasuge, social welfare, very very high. Uh, as a socialist country, wonderful. Uh, but suicide rate, very high, isn't it? Very high, uh, I was told. Uh, now Japan, also you see materially, uh, and in the industrialized sort of nation, very modernized nation, yeah. uh, the material economic condition, of course, recent years, as a sort of, uh, the whole global level, is some crisis, so the Japanese, uh, yeah, with economy, some difficulties there. On top of that, nature disaster also, you see, creates some problems. Now, however, the generally economic condition, good. Uh, but the, I was told it's a suicide rate uh, quite high. If wrong, please make correction. <laughs> I was told. I just returned yesterday from uh, sorry, Okinawa. I was told their crime rate is much less. Isn't it? Is it true? Yes. <laughs> You're noting that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so in any way, you see the <coughs> material development alone now clearly shows no guarantee uh, the, uh, sort of happy society. Yeah. We social animal. So in our life, friendship, friends, it's very essential. Yeah. The friendship entirely based on trust, mutual trust. Trust depend on honest, truthful, transparent, through that way, trust will, will come. With, with trust, yeah, genuine friendship. So money, sometimes, uh, instead of money, instead of bring trust, but money brings more fear, more distrust. <laughs> so now, time come, we must find out 
others whether you see there are some others or what's the uh, what's the are other factor which ultimately the source of happy life up to now i think we people just you see all our hope put on money uh, you become richer or uh, you will be happier life or happier person now material itself showing us limitation of material value uh, so now time come we have to uh, include our inner world not only money not only material facility uh, uh, the ultimate source uh, ultimate source or at least one very important factor for inner peace is our inner value now the question of inner value uh, i usually say the uh, those are human affection or another word compassion or love these are basically biological factor not necessarily come from religious faith we everybody uh, as soon as we born you see we already is have the experience the appreciation of mother's love mother's affection according scientists medical some medical scientists today say after birth next few weeks simply mother's physical touch is the one very important factor to proper development of the child's brain at that time uh, not much intelligence but biological factor you see that that child infant survey should you infant what to call infant or uh, infant no idea who is that person uh, but but biologically the person carry uh, show loves the child feel happy or uh, peace or safe so that's the our life started that way so those people i often is telling now for example here perhaps over 1000 people here outwardly everybody very smart old person accordingly or your age very smart <laughs> the young people also very smart everybody very, very smart but uh, if you have some special mission to check deep inside what kind of feeling no. i think i am quite sure you see those individual who received maximum affection from our mother i think deep inside much sorrow stable karma those people who at that age receive l- less affection from our mother from our parent i think deep inside some sense of insecure uh, insecurity insecurity so the, these are biological factor uh, <clears throat> so on the basis of now scientific is the finding also now showing more calm mind more healthy mind your physical also automatically become more healthier uh, too much irritation uh, anger hatred actually some scientists say eating our immune system so now in order to take uh i think uh, full i mean in order to take care about our physical health we have to take care about our emotion we cannot neglect about emotion part There's some uh, sort of was the agitated mind tranquilizer or worst thing alcohol or drugs just temporary sort of relief not much sort of effect Uh, one day maybe is some i think dr barry carson or some other you see the, the, the specialist 
one day they may find some sort of or say they method to remove some some part of our brain which usually you see emotion you see comes and if you see uh, there is some kind of technology develop remove these things then everybody always 24 hours smile <laughs> <laughs> that also not necessarily good <laughs> I think even you see uh, things going very bad but still S smile. That's, I think, <laughs> not normal. <laughs> so, you see, with full alert or uh, <clears throat> intelligence, no, this is good, this is bad, this is dangerous, this is safe. <coughs> Meantime, <coughs> some ability, the so destructive sort of the event, will not disturb your mind. That we can do through training, through awareness uh, about the world of the emotion. Uh, better knowledge, some experience, then you can judge firstly your emotion, then you can some kind of control. Destructive emotion, restrain, re reduce. Constructive emotion can increase. Other animals cannot do that. We only, human beings can do that. So our knowledge work together, brain, uh, heart work together. Uh, heart usually is bring emotion. The brain usually is give intelligence. So combine these two things. So, uh, so therefore, now for well-being of humanity, if humanity's mental state calm, more compassionate than many other species of mammals also then, I think, certainly I think less disturbances. Too much greed here. No sort of respect form of life. A lot of exploitation, animal. Or Japanese here, a lot of exploitation about <laughs> the fish or some these small worms like that. <laughs> so therefore, uh, therefore, I think we human being more contented. Of course, basic necessity sort of facility we must <coughs> should have must have. But then some contentment with knowing oh there's limitation material value there's limitation in any way. But mental progress, no limitation. Because the, the, as a quality, the quality, quality based on matters, matter itself, there's limitation. So quality also limited. Characteristics. So, then the mind, no form. So no limitation. Through training, we can increase these certain sort of good quality based on mind, because mind formless. So there's possibility of infinite development. So usually we just opposite material field. In any way there's limitation, but we never content. Always want more and more and more. Internal value, actually you see, we can uh, extend indefinitely but we usually contend it. Yeah. So now here, although I think three, four thousand years, different religious tradition among the Egyptian belief, uh, Egyptian civilization, some sort of belief there. And then India, uh, I think at least three, four thousand year old, some sort of tradition about spirituality <coughs> and also China as well. But then, now we are in 21st century. I think quite a big portion of humanity not much interest about religious faith. Uh, so these people, essentially non-believer, these also human beings, human brothers, sisters, 
they also need inner peace. And also these people, you see, because of see, too much negative, destructive emotion, a lot of problems, you see, happen. Therefore, we, we have to find ways and means to reach even non-believer, the training about mind, through training more compassionate mind, more sensible mind, yeah, more sensible, through that way, uh, try to become sensible human being. Oh. Everybody wants happy life. Do not want sort of problem. I think any person who in early morning, as soon as you wake up, you see, uh, wish, or oh, today I should face more problem. I think nobody feels that. Instead, even those people who, whose life, a lot of problems, even these people, I think at the beginning of the day, at least they feel, oh, today should be less problem. Meantime, if we investigate thoroughly <coughs> the problem, the problem of the world, complete sort of, sort of eliminate problem, it is unrealistic. Problem will be there. Now what we can do is individual sort of mental state, in spite of some problem there, we can maintain peace of mind. So with peace of mind, we will not create more problem to others. So now that I think is possible. Uh, so without relying on religious faith, we have to find new, new or another way to, cult, to, to educate people. Whether interest about religion or not, it's up to individual. Okay, remain non-believer. Perfectly all right, but should be, uh, should be because of the, should, should be uh, as a uh, peace, peaceful mind. Then uh, they themselves also happier, uh, and will not create much problems. So that should be universally sort of acceptable. Religion, no matter how sort of wonderful religious faith, but will never be universal. So this problem is universally, we are facing universally. So the method to, to reduce this problem also should be universally acceptable. So that's now secular way. Secular ethics. Uh, when I use the word secular, some my friend, some Muslim, and some Christian, they have some reservation, the word secular. One time, uh, in, then Germans still divided. So one time in West Germany, uh, on my talk, one minister, the West German government, you see, he also you see, came. And then before our, our talk, I just casually talk about the, any sort of moral ethics should be based on religious faith or not. And he told me, oh, any sort of moral ethics must be based on religious faith. So that kind of sort of what's the views there. So the uh, Kasadi, a secular means a little bit negative towards religious faith. However, Indian understanding about secular, that is not that way, not negative way. The thousand years uh, in India, you see already different religious belief already there. Uh, different sort of different school of thought already there. So among them, one school of thought, which we call Charvaka, the Sanskrit word Charvaka, who denying 
any value of spirituality. Uh, so people usually call nihilism. Charvaka is nihilism. So only the dead raised life, not next life, or no God, no heaven, nothing. So the uh, other, so the Indian, so the philosophical <coughs> school, school of thought, all <coughs> criticize this view and condemn this view as a nihilism. However, people who hold this view refer Rishi. Rishi means sage. So the view criticize, but person who keep this view respect. So that's the meaning of secular. So according Indian sort of understanding what secular means, uh, respect all religions, no preference this religion or that religion, and also respect non-believer. So that's the Indian understanding. So therefore, when India become independence, uh, the India's constitution based on secular secularism, because India uh, like multi-religious nation. Therefore, you see, uh, you cannot say this religion is the nation's religion. You cannot say that. So it should be secular. And also, you see, that means respect non-believer. So when I sort of use the word secular according Indian understanding, so not at all negative towards religious, the religious belief. And then perhaps I think the French Revolution and Bolshevik Revolution, perhaps it is some sort of hint secular means against religion, but that not necessarily religious teaching itself but rather religious institution. That's understandable. At that time, ruling Kasota class, or kings, or these, these, uh, and Kasota, at Okasa. Aristocracy. Uh, you see, these people usually received uh, benefit, as a blessing from religious hierarchy. Uh, so in order to topple, you see, that existing sort of ruling class, uh, people should develop sort of enthusiasm even against uh, religious people or religious leader. So there might be this is some sort of sort of the, I say some uh, some impact or some implication the uh, secular secularism against religious authority. Maybe That's some reason. Oh, some reason. That's understandable. Religion become dirty. So we have to topple that. <laughs> uh, but that does not mean actually against religion. That means who against human love, human compassion, forgiveness? No one should disagree. These are something bad. No. All these really value. Isn't it? But religious institution corrupted, corrupted religious institution even today, even among Tibetans or as a Buddhist also, you see some corrupted institution there. <laughs> Hopefully, Dalai Lama institution, I'm hoping not corrupted. <laughs> 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 so therefore, uh, so therefore, yeah, secular does not mean negative towards religion but rather respect all religion. So my approach, promote <coughs> this human value according secular basis, not touching with religious faith. I understand. No. So, uh, so now here, the backbone of secular, sort of the, sort of the secular way of approach to promote these secular ethics, now scientific finding is very, very essential. Very useful, very helpful. So, so it's two purpose. So this, this kind of the meeting, firstly, expand our knowledge, and secondly, say, uh, 
how to bring the common people's mind the importance of our inner values, uh, scientific basis sort of reasons. That is more convic more convincing. More convincing. To some people say, oh, you should be a compassionate person because God uh, will judge. Uh, use God-fearing. I think many people say, oh, nonsense. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but if we show them more compassionate person, the blood pressure reduce, <laughs> or stress reduce, much happier. Uh, then a spontaneous smile will come. Too much stress. <laughs> I always like that. Even you see, with full of because of the stress here, some smile maybe then diplomatic smile. <laughs> <laughs> Not much feeling. <laughs> so diplomatic smile sometimes uh, bring more fear, more suspicion, isn't it? <laughs> like that. So therefore, uh, my main interest is is it both firstly knowledge academic field. And secondly, the how to, because of the, our knowledge, how to bring some because of the effect to, mass, to the masses and realize the being more compassionate person is the best interest for their own well-being. That's all. So, so then, uh, right from the beginning, some, you see, uh, also they, uh, our people, or the people from the, so the Minded Life Institution, you see, they use the word dialogue between Buddhism and modern science. Right from the beginning, I made, <coughs> I made clear, this is a wrong word. Not Buddhism, uh, but science which mentioned in Buddhist literature. So we can, we can say Buddhist uh, science of mind and modern science. So science of mind, which mentioned in Buddhist literature, it's actually science, not Buddhist religion. So usually I make distinction. Science, uh, Buddhist science, then Buddhist philosophy, then Buddhist religion. So Buddhist science, certainly. And then Buddhist philosophy, some sort of the philosophical views are universal. Uh, some philosophical view related with Buddhist religion. So therefore, uh, I usually used to make a distinction. Science, Buddhist, I mean science which simply mentioned in Buddhist literature itself, this is something universal, uh, academic subject like that. So. Now your turn, I think. Okay. <laughs> your Holiness, thank you very much for those warm words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.